Alright, breakaway gaps. Now, breakaway gaps. Um, pretty cool concept, honestly. It's a pretty, pretty good confluence. Whenever I see a form, is basically telling you, like, okay, we're going this way, okay? Do you understand that? We're going this way. We're, we're showing that we're going this way, okay? That's, that's basically all it is. And a breakaway gap is a gap after, or a gap right before a displacement move that occurs, that, that stays open, and it tells your price is going. So, for example, if your run on liquidity was all the way down here, or probably within one of these short-term lows here, and let's say your setup occurred around here, okay? And this is the displacement move you're anticipating. So if you're anticipating a breakout, or if you're anticipating some sort of displacement move into a draw on liquidity, that first fair value gap that's created before the entire displacement move, that's your breakaway gap. So this would be your breakaway gap. Why do you call it a breakaway gap? Because like I said, it's the first gap before an anticipated displacement move into a draw on liquidity. That's what it is. And the reason you call it a breakaway gap is because it's going to stay open. That's, that's why you call it a breakaway gap. We could just call this a regular fair value gap, in which it is. It is a fair value gap. But what is the fair value gap? The fair value gap is a breakaway gap. So this gap is not going to get tapped into. And even if it does get tapped into, you can treat it as an order, institutional order flow entry drill. Oh, wow. My mouse is tweaking again, guys. Institutional order flow entry drill. If you don't know what that is, it's basically when price taps the fair value gap very efficiently without going past the consequent encroachment. That's what that is. So did it order flow? It did it institutional order flow entry drill it? Nope, it didn't. It did not. So, and there's ways you can counter breakaway gaps because if you see a breakaway gap, you there can they can either be good for you or bad for you. Good for you is that's a confluence. Let's say you already have a sell in, for example, sell all the way up here. For example, you took this inversion right here. If you sold up here and you saw this breakaway gap form, it's like, okay, now we're really about to go lower. We're really about to go lower. But let's say you didn't have an entry at all. Okay, this is the big part. Let's say you didn't have an, an entry and price is about to displace as you, as you anticipate. But you're worried because you don't have an entry yet. There's nothing you can take. There's no order block. There's no breaker. There's no fair value gap that you can take. And even if this inversion was here, you didn't see it. That breakaway gap occurs and you're like, oh, man. And then, and then you watch the market run on you. But there's multiple things you can do. Remember, there's two things. You have institutional order flow entry drill and immediate rebalance. Okay. Immediate rebalance occurs where? Right there. There's one right there. Like I said, that's the strongest confluence to exist. Right there. And even one right here. Bam. See that? That's the immediate rebalance. ICT says that is the strongest confluence to exist. You can search it up. Just go ahead and go, go to ICT index, right? I'll pull it up for you. ICT index. This here. If you type in immediate rebalance, this is literally the strongest, the, the strongest uh, confluence there is. This pattern signals that the market is likely to move rapidly in a particular direction. So this is literally the strongest confluence that you can see. If you use it correctly with other confluences using concept infusion, very simple. Going back to the charts, talking about breakaway gaps. I'm going off track, but it is all right because we're still on breakaway gaps. But this will be your breakaway gap because why? Your draw liquidity is these short-term lows here, these points of liquidity: one, two, three, four, five, and then this accumulated liquidity here. So if you anticipate that price is going to come down here and splurge down into these lows, that first fair value gap. That begins the displacement or that first fair value gap within that displacement run is your breakaway gap. That gap should stay open. Nothing, it should not come into this at all. This fair value gap, it should not come into that at all. And even if it does, like I said, you can institutional order flow entry drill. Did it institutional order flow entry drill it? Nope. It, it didn't tease the fair value gap. It didn't do it. But that's your breakaway gap. And there's a couple more down here that I did recognize. So for example, in the higher probability, I'll keep this, I'll say this real quick. Higher probability breakaway gaps or real, I guess you can say better breakaway gaps, they form after time distortion. Okay. So whenever you see time distortion and you see a fair value gap form right after the time distortion or displacement fair value gap or, you know, a fair value gap that forms after time distortion, that's a, that's a good confluence. It's a good confluence. Because right here, if you look, there is time distortion right here. 
See how price is not moving for a little while? Like right here, it's just not moving. Right in this little area. That's time distortion. Then you see that fair value gap there? That's your breakaway gap. Does it come into it? No. Okay. In the okay, I'll say this, I'll say this too. If you know that's a breakaway gap, right? Once price is done running on liquidity, it can then come into that gap, okay? But until then, if price is still running on liquidity or having some run, it can either do three things, okay? It can either rebalance into equilibrium, rebalance imbalances, or it can run on liquidity. If it's doing one of those three things, that gap has to stay open. That breakaway has to stay open. With, within that, within price doing those three things, okay? But once price is done doing those three things, oh yeah, it, it's, it, it can come into this gap whenever it wants. Because it's done doing what it's doing. The liquidity run was up here. Right above that high. Bing. Price came up to it and then started consolidating. And if you want to get even more technical with it, there's that fair value gap right there. It came and rebalanced that fair value gap. Bam. Easy. Very easy. Not hard at all. Okay? Not hard at all. And you know, if you want to include a measuring gap, this is a breakaway gap and a measuring gap too. So if you want to, you know, get a little stylish with it, go ahead. Boom, bam. Standard deviation. And wow, one standard deviation that comes right up to it and just, you know, Look at the bodies, pay. Do you see that? Pay attention to the bodies, yo. See how close it gets? Close right next to it. Then all the other bodies close right below it. That one standard deviation is a good target. So this is a breakaway gap and a what's the word? I can't get it on. And a measuring gap. <laughs> there it is, a measuring gap. That's what this is. Why is it a breakaway? Because we had time distortion. That's a confluence that this is a breakaway. But if there's no if there's no time distortion, you just use natural anticipatory anticipatory skill development. So whenever you anticipate or you have confluences that tell you the displacement is about to occur, that first fair value gap within that displacement run is the breakaway gap. That gap should not be tapped into. And even if it does, like I said, it should be an institutional orderful entry drill, and you can use that institutional orderful entry drill as your entry. Simple, right? It's not hard at all. Let's go over here. Are there are there any more? Are there any more breakaway gaps? But before I even before I even go any further, is there any more breakaway gaps in this in this vicinity? There's one here. See that? Right along there. See why? Because look at all this this liquidity resting here. Price has to come up there. So if you anticipate that price is gonna come up there. That first fair value gap on that and on that anticipated liquidity run, that's your breakaway. Because like I said, price can either do three three things. It can rebalance the equilibrium, rebalance imbalances, or it can run on liquidity. And one of the things it did was run on liquidity. So until it's done running liquidity, which is all the way up here. Right there. Bam. Once it's done doing that, then once it did it, it can now come into this fair value gap. After it did it, did it come into that gap? It did. It did. Very simple. Very, very simple. Isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Look at this right here. Some more time distortion. See that? Time distortion right there. Price isn't moving. Because this is London session. Right around here is London session. Price isn't moving. Where's the first gap? Right there. Doesn't matter how small it is, it's a gap. Right there, that's your breakaway. Okay? Well, what, what, what is it doing? One out of three things, what is it doing? It's running on liquidity. So, once it's done running liquidity, it can now come into this gap. Once it ran liquidity, what did it do? Once it ran liquidity, what did it do? Came straight into that breakaway gap, and this breakaway gap. Isn't that amazing? Pretty beautiful, huh? You know. Going to do measuring gaps just to have fun with it. Let's include some measuring gaps, shall we? Where's the equilibrium? Equilibrium is right around there, and that is your measuring gap right there. Actually, right there is your measuring gap. Bam, that's pretty impressive. And then look, one standard deviation takes it out perfectly. Crazy, isn't it? Takes it out literally perfectly. 
Look at the bodies. Look at the bodies, man. See how the bot. You know what? Let's do the liquidity scan. Liquidity pool scan. Look at the body. See that? How it takes it out with the wicks. The wicks are around here. And it came straight to it and closed below it. If you want to reveal it again, see that? Right on. And closed below it. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That's gaps for you. Gap theory is literally... Well, I, even, I, I don't use gaps that much. I'm, no, everyone uses gaps. I can't say that. I use gaps, I guess you could say, an intermediate amount of the time. Or, you know, small amount of the time. But they're they're pretty pretty strong, okay? Especially if you use them correctly with other confluences like SMT or, you know, anything of your preference that you would like to use for your model. Okay, that, that's, that's your model. Whatever you would like to use that you've perfected and that you've seen over the course of months or weeks and that you've actually traded and that you're confident in using that's then your model. Speaking of model, I might just come up with a series that's going over strictly on how to create a model. And I think I have the name somewhere, whatever it's at. Um, this right here. Model creation series, see that? Model creation series, and it's called the Epitome Framework Blueprint. That's it right there. And I think it might have about 10 episodes. Um, then if you want to, you know, have an extra leak, here's all the stuff that's coming. It's a lot of stuff that's coming. But um, I'll be in this video here. I gave you a little teaser of what's coming. There's a lot. There's still a lot. I still have to finish the ICT Mastery Mentorship. There's a lot that's coming, but that's a little teaser for you. I'm um in this video here because I got more things to record for you people because there's people learning from me. Very small amount of people, but you know, there's still people learning from me, so that just encourages me more. But with all seriousness, I am talking too much. I'll um enjoy your day or night or whenever you're watching this. Peace.